Good morning, everyone. Welcome to Cornell Cooperative Extension and our monthly consumer issues program. I'm Mike Danaher, an assistant attorney general with the New York State Attorney General's Office. Uh, today's topic that we're talking about is uh, being a wise consumer on the internet. I'll have to start out by saying that I'm not a huge tech whiz. I like tech and I use tech. I use it all the time, as many people will. But I would not consider myself to be a, a real tech whiz and couldn't talk to you about the intricacies of uh, connections and the internet and all that stuff. But, uh, but as far as a consumer of internet products, I, I am one and, and I use it frequently. And I know that a lot of other people are out there doing it as well. I think we've also morphed over to where certain groups who might not be the first ones in and when a new thing comes out, uh, such as our seniors, when, uh, when that comes out, uh, I, uh, my experience has been that, it, that seniors, seniors have now started to use the internet quite frequently, becoming more comfortable with its use. And so what we need to talk about here today is being a wise consumer when using these, the, this particular product. Uh, the internet's a great thing. Uh, it takes us to wonderful places. We can view all types of uh, exotic sites and uh, locations. Uh, it, we can use it to expand our knowledge. There are all types of uh, internet services that are out there, some free, some pay, that allows us to expand our knowledge, to uh, take courses on different topics, allows us to get information at the uh, touch of a button. I am using it all the time to do research, uh, look up things. You can, you can go to college online nowadays. Uh, one of my relatives uh, recently who, who lives in the, in the southern tier area, I saw on social media, Facebook page, that uh, my relative was attending college at Penn State. And I'm saying, wow, I wonder if they moved out of the area or what? And come to find out that uh, my relative is getting an advanced degree, master's degree, by attending Penn State totally online. Um, so all, there are all types of things available. Uh, we buy things. Uh, I know that for those of you watching out in television land today, um, you'll be seeing us just toward the end of the holiday season and probably the rush of the post-holiday season uh, sales that occur. Um, but for those of us here today, we're in the midst of the holiday season. And I was just seeing reports out uh, through business publications uh, and media posts that we are continuing to in if total total shopping is here that's made up of um, store purchases online purchases and as it would appear to make sense a larger percentage of sales each year are coming from online purchases during the holiday season rather than in-store purchases. It's kind of it used to be 100% store and very little internet and it's starting to go starting to go like this. Still in-store purchases are the vast majority of purchases that occur during the holiday season, but it is being eroded by the uh, use of online purchases, which is, a, which is a great thing, especially for those of us that don't like to go to stores and things. We can just go online and find out what it is and, and get it. We're using online for uh, um, learning how to fix things. I have, uh, and I've used it myself more recently. I don't usually think about it originally, but the more I've heard other people doing it, I'll say, okay, um, eventually, my cell phone is going to need a new battery. So just out of a lark, I looked the other day and say, uh, I just wrote in a, a search, uh, how to replace battery on my particular type of phone and hit it. And there were videos up showing people how you do it. Now, I'm not going to make that attempt 
because it looks like I could do a really good job at breaking it, but I, can, I saw how you actually would do it. Uh, people, are, uh, people are doing that all the time. I, uh, I just saw in a magazine I was reading, I saw an advertisement for YouTube. And it was a, pu a business publication. Um, and I saw an ad for, and what it was was it was a, it was a, a one page ad of a picture of a guy who actually, a former service member who I believe went into the service uh, as a high uh, after high school, didn't do any advanced degrees or anything like that, and then got out of the, the military and was, I think, doing um, uh, lower wage type jobs. Uh, but he got this passion for being a scientist. And in order to become a scientist, he had to have more math. And the, the advertisement said that he was a physicist now and that he got through uh, being a physicist in order to bring his, his skills up to a standard where he could actually go to college for this. He learned math, uh, uh, I think it was calculus and uh, trigonometry and things, by viewing YouTube videos and teaching himself how to do math. So it, it, it is a wondrous thing. However, we do have to be very careful about using the internet. Uh, we have become almost too comfortable uh, in gaining access, especially for those who are relatively new to it, don't know the, the pitfalls that can be involved in it, and sometimes we become too, too comfortable and drop our guard um, and have um, made ourselves vulnerable and have fallen victim to the types of problems that can occur with the use of the internet. We're starting, because we're so comfortable with it, we're starting to give out all of our personal information on social media sites, Instagrams and Facebooks and all the other ones that are out there. Sending money to people we don't know because um, through the use of internet we've used it to communicate with others, but we may not necessarily know who those people are in person. We've sent out money, we've purchased things on the internet, without uh, uh, vetting the source of what, where we're buying from. And although it is a, still, is a great tool for us, we need to be good consumers in our use of it. One of the areas is buying things online. None of, none of us want to go through all the long lines. I can remember not that long ago, in the rare instance where I decided, hey, let's go out and hit those, those Friday, uh, Black Friday sales when they first crop up at 6 o'clock in the morning on Friday. Now, I know that uh, we've now morphed it back. It's evolved back to now these sales are taking place on Thanksgiving Day. Um, and now they're starting to get earlier and earlier on Thanksgiving Day. And I know that from online uh, uh, advertisements that apparently you can get on the Black Friday deals earlier in the week even by going online. But I, I ventured out at one point in time when there were everybody was going out at the wee hours of the morning on Friday to get that great deal. And I've stood in those lines. I can remember going to one retailer that actually doesn't exist anymore. And, and the checkout line was an hour long. Nobody wants to do that. You can go online, order the thing that you want, and have it delivered. Uh, avoid the time it takes to drive to the store. Get better prices sometimes online than you're going to get on uh, Black Friday. And, uh, uh, and when I did do that, and ventured out and in the wee hours of the morning. I went back home uh, after we got done with whatever our shopping was and I went on I went online. This is this was uh, you know ten years ago it was earlier on. And I discovered that I could have actually gotten the exact same price for the thing that I bought and just had it delivered to the house and not have had to, to go through all of that. But 
we want to do those sorts of things, but we, got, we have to be very careful. We want to protect our privacy. Some of the things to do to protect the privacy is to, uh, is to not give out personal information, meaning our credit card numbers, our dates of birth, our expirations of our credit card, our bank account numbers. Don't do those things unless you're really sure who you're dealing with. Make sure that you go to reputable um, locations online. Make sure that you use reputable stores. Make sure that you're not dealing with some scam artist out there that seems to show you this great price because you may be setting yourself up for a scam. Make sure that you're, before you relay any information, any personal information, that you're at a secure site. And the secure site is up on the URL line where you type in www. whatever. That before you put out any personal information, that before the www. up should pop up, HTTPS, the S stands for secure site. Make sure that you're at a secure site, which in essence encrypts your data that you are sending out as it gets thrown out over the internet. And when it is received, it gets decoded so that you're not just um, sending out over the internet lines that can be hacked into um, your personal information. Um, I, identity theft is, in fact, the largest financial fraud that is occurring. We talk about here at a separate session at Cornell Cooperative Extension on identity theft. It is rampant. Uh, scam artists are attempting to get this information uh, in any way possible. We don't want to help them. Don't help them by sending it out over unsecured site. Another thing is know who you're dealing with. Get real world information on the people or company that you're dealing with with your online purchases. You can uh, uh, get through the Better Business Bureau a reliability report on these particular businesses. There are rating sites out there as well. Um, just be very careful about what rating sites that you're going to. There have been entities known to uh, have uh, bots or artificial uh, reviews posted saying, hey, this is the greatest place in the world, this is the greatest place in the world, and you come to find out that those are not legitimate. Uh, there are people that are, uh, are trying to fudge those um, ratings, so be very careful with that. Um, Remember that the reports on the site itself, on the feedback of the site, could be bogus, or could be trumped up, could be um, um, uh, filtered, so the bad ones stay out and the good ones go in. Um, stick with reliable vendors and understand that cheaper is not always better. Um, do your due diligence. Be a good consumer. Be wary of online auction sites. They are only intermediaries. So they're the ones that are just holding the auction. In some instances, they don't um, verify the reliability of the seller. Um, so before you give your money and it, it's going to be transferred on to the seller, make sure that you use reputable sites. Keep co if you do use an auction site, keep copies of the description of what is being offered out there so that you can match that up with what you ultimately, re ultimately receive. And that, uh, so you want to keep all the ads and all the descriptions and that sort of thing. Know the return policy of where it is you're buying it from. Is it all sales are final? Um, if so, think twice about whether or not you want to buy something, even though it's a really good price. Think twice about whether or not you want to buy something if you find out that their uh, uh, return policy ends up um, eating into any savings that you would have had if you had uh, bought, bought that item somewhere else. Um, 
I suggest that you use a credit card when you're purchasing these things just, just because uh, I have this personal thing where I don't want I don't want to be using my debit card, meaning giving someone access directly to my bank account to take money out of it um, when I'm making these types of purchases. What I like to do is put it on a credit card. Uh, the best thing to do is to put it on a credit card that you only use for online purchases and the credit card uh, um, maximum is a very limited amount. That way when you make the purchase and if there should be some problem that goes wrong. One, um, all a credit card is really is a loan that you pay off and if you have the right kind of credit card there's no interest if you pay it by the due date. And so you pay that uh, loan in essence off for the item that you purchased. I'm becoming more and more of a credit card user. I'm carrying less cash with me. Just makes it simpler. So uh, I get the bill in at the end of the month. I make sure that every charge on that bill is mine and then I and then I pay it. I don't carry balances on my credit card and a good consumer in the wise use of credit which is another topic we talk about here at Cornell Cooperative Extension uh, does not carry credit card balances because the interest rates on credit cards are so significant. Don't get caught in that trap. Get these debts paid off as quickly as possible. I think you would find that most credit experts, those that advise people on the use of credit, will tell you get those credit card interest bills paid off first. Get, get those taken care of. Uh, on the reverse side, those of you that use the internet to sell online also must be careful. Um, there, it could include uh, classified sections of newspapers that are posted online as well. Be very careful about that. Uh, those who sell online have become victims of different um, types of scams that are out there. I'll use, uh, I'll use one site which is Craigslist. Craigslist is a very familiar site used by people to sell their things. Uh, I would say that there are certain ways that you can go toward protecting yourself. I've talked to people who have used it very effectively um, in selling items that they, don't, that they don't want or need any longer. But here are some things. One of the big scams that occurs with the use of selling things online are the fake check scams, which people pay by fake checks. They tell you to go down to your bank and deposit the check and send the item out to them. You send the item out immediately and the check that you had deposited, you thought had cleared, did not, it bounced and all of a sudden you've sent your item out there and you don't get paid for it. Things that you need to be careful about is if somebody were to pay you, you may want to hold off sending the item and at least notify them ahead of time that if you pay by check, I am going to hold the item until that check has specifically cleared. That way you know that you get paid and that way that uh, you aren't sending your item off and end up not getting paid. I've heard uh, stories where people have sent things out and then the, the charge got challenged and uh, the, or the the, uh, the check bounced and they didn't have any way of getting it back. So people need to be very careful about that. I've heard of instances where people are actually uh, um, renting their homes, uh, uh, buyers, uh, landlords and tenants, uh, renting, um, renting their homes or renting an apartment or uh, something like that from the from the renter side the tenant side be very careful I know people are coming very comfortable with the use of the internet and think okay well I'm gonna be moving into a new community in another month I'm gonna go online I'll find a nice apartment I'll send out my deposit I'll send out my first month's rent and then when they show up in the new community they find out that it was a hoax and that there is no such apartment and the, the money is gone. Same thing with the sellers that uh, they're, they're getting paid um, or, or, or landlords. They're getting paid with uh, fake checks or not good funds and they're losing out on getting tenants uh, because uh, of that. I, my suggestion is 
These online sources, Craigslist and others, are very valuable. They, they can provide a good service. But I suggest to you, only deal with people ultimately face to face. Don't sell something unless the person is going to come and pick it up. If they said they're going to send somebody else to get it, um, sirens should be going off in your head. If they'll send you a check and the check is for too much money and it's coming from a third party, it's not coming from the actual person who's buying it, red flag, sirens going off. What they'll do lots of times is they'll send, the money, they'll send a check, they'll ask you to cash it, put it in your account, then they'll contact you and say, well, um, I'm going to be sending a friend over to pick up uh, whatever item it was. That check was, was more money than what you were selling it for. So just wire me back the difference. They're trying to get you to wire money out to them before this check is really officially cleared, and all of a sudden, you're out the money and, and they're not coming to pick it up. Um, be very careful about that. Make sure you deal with them ultimately, personally. Here's the one big thing also with the use of the internet. And that is use of pins and passwords. The strongest, the, the, the the chain is only as strong as its weakest link. And in far, as far as the internet goes, the weakest link are passwords and pins. It could be weak in the sense that you have given out your password or pin to someone else. Never give out passwords and pins to other people. Um, they always say that a secret is only a secret as long as you keep it. If you give it to somebody else, it's not a secret any longer, and there's nothing that prevents that person from giving it out to somebody else, and it just becomes a wildfire. Never give out pins and passwords. Those are unique to you. Keep those for yourself. Also, the passwords themselves. They need to be as robust as possible. Some places are requiring um, it has to be from at least 8 to 20 characters. It has to include a capital letter, a small letter, a number, and a symbol. Um, the longer the password is, the more robust it is, the more security it provides. But I know there are many out there that one can't remember what it is, so doesn't want to change it from one, one website to another, that's a huge problem because if you, you repeat passwords over several websites, you, are, you have given the key to a whole bunch of websites. If one gets hacked, that would actually access your password to all these other places. The other thing that people are doing, they're, us, they're, use, they're keeping them short, and they're using sequential numbers, one, two, three, four, five, six, or one, 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 one. Uh, some people who are using words are using words that are easily hacked, such as the word password is used as someone's password. People are using the last four digits of their social security number as their pins. People are using the last four digits of their telephone number as pins. Be very careful. Make it so that it cannot be associated to you. The um, current literature on uh, on passwords and safety of passwords are saying that the best passwords are phrases, not phrases that are taken off a book or a movie that are very common um, because those can be hacked very easily as well. But to make up another pass, uh, make up another phrase that you can remember that is easy, it, it, it's easy to remember, but it, a phrase is a lot longer. And then within the phrase itself, you intersperse symbols and capital letters instead of regular letters and numbers in case of uh, 
uh, uh, in place of other letters. So if you have a phrase that you replace with the A's with an ampersand, which is a symbol, I think it's the capital of number two, hit capital two, that's the ampersand, it's the A with a circle around it. Uh, use an exclamation point instead of an L or a one instead of an L. Use, uh, use other things to replace, uh, replace uh, an S with the number five. Do all these different types of things interspersed within your phrase and you're gonna go a long way toward protecting yourself that nobody will be able to hack that. There are some uh, that uh, uh, I know that I write, I have so many different passwords in so many different places that I write them down in a, in a notebook that I keep in a very safe place so that actually last night I had to look one up because I just couldn't remember what it was. I, I have, have so many. And, uh, and then I was able to, to use it. Uh, I know, I don't know if all of you out there have, have had that experience, but um, I know with my office, I have to, on a regular basis, change my passwords. They, it makes me change my password or I can't access our system. I actually have multiple passwords for certain aspects of our system, so I have to change those as well, and it can get quite daunting. But there are ways out there to devise uh, uh, systems, uh, that you can make your passwords uh, robust, but still change them and still be able to remember, remember them. And as a matter of fact, for those that are using uh, passwords or having access to certain uh, sites on a very regular basis, like in my case daily, multiple times daily, because my, my system also uh, goes into sleep mode if I haven't used it for a few minutes. And uh, although annoying as it may be, I have to log back in every time when it goes into sleep. That's a, that's a security protection. And uh, it's good, and I become accustomed to it, so it's no big deal. But th therefore, I'm able to remember that password because I have to put it in dozens of times a day. And so it's not any problem remembering those. It's the ones that we aren't on that frequently that we have to remember. And I do, uh, I do write those down and uh, keep them in a very safe place and, and still change them periodically. I have, I have one that I only access this one once a week and I only access it from a certain location. Uh, I don't access it other but when I'm going out, I'm out and remote or I'm on my phone or things like that. I don't access it that way. I access it, actually it's once every two weeks. I, uh, I access this, uh, this site uh, to get some information that I have to get every two weeks. And I just, I just know that I'm only gonna be in this one spot when I have to access that, that, that internet website. So I have a convoluted password for that that is I have n I will have no way of ever remembering what that is capital letters small letters figures uh, numbers and symbols uh, and I just it's like a soup of it I just throw it up on a piece of paper and so I know that I have to look it up every time I go there so I keep it in a safe place I have it right there I pull it out every time I'm going to access that particular website and I'm good to go and I know that it's very, very secure because it has a lot of uh, 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 important information and private information on it. So those are the ways that can be done. We need to remain safe online. Um, again, protect ourselves from social media, uh, uh, from uh, uh, giving out personal information. Do not give out personal information to someone who contacts you. And I say that all the time when we're here. And I mean it, if somebody contacts you, and it could be through the internet, somebody sends you an email or something, never give out personal information in reply to that email. Unless you know that whoever it is that's sending it to you is actually in need of that information. So if you get an email from a relative saying, hey, can you give me this, and it turns out to be personal information. Um, before you hit reply, Contact that person and say, hey, you know, I got an email from you and you asked for this. You, you really need that? And they go, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Then you could send it to them. But take the chance 
of just hitting reply and sending it is a big risk because it could have been a hacker who got a hold of that person's email, broke into their email, uh, uh, pirated it, and then sent you an email so that the information that you are sending out doesn't go back to the person you think it would be going to, but it goes to a nefarious source. So make sure before you give out any personal information, whether it's to a relative, your bank, your credit card company, don't give out to someone who contacts you. If you contact them and send the information, you're a lot better off and reduce the probability that you're going to be victimized by a fraud or a scam. Be very careful about who you deal with. Make sure it's someone that you know who it is. And also, be very careful about your, work, your use of social networking. All of the, the Facebooks and the, the other social media that's out there, in Instagram and whatever other ones that are out there, uh, LinkedIn, all those things. Be very careful about what you're pasting, posting on those sites. It's a fantastic way to communicate. I use the example that I've had contact with high school friends of mine um, that I haven't seen in 40 years. And I have access to them. I see what they're doing. I can communicate w with them if I need to. But be very careful about what you actually post on those things, on, on those sites. Uh, there have been instances where people uh, are posting um, where they are, that they're on vacation, they're posting their, uh, their pictures of where they are on their vacation, and what you are announcing to everyone, especially if you have a public uh, site, you're posting that you're out of town and away from your home. I was just out in an event the other night doing a speaking engagement on, on frauds and scams and including identity theft and one of the people in the crowd said that they had a, someone they knew, I don't know if it was a relative or just someone they knew, that uh, someone in, their fam uh, in a family had passed away. And, um, and of course the obituary lists where the funeral is and when the funeral is and stuff. And people, uh, a, scam artist, not a scam artist, a thief, uh, was, was scanning obituaries and that while the family was away at the funeral, the, uh, actually it was the decedent, the decedent's house was broken into and things were stolen. So you can see how putting stuff out on social media could have an effect of, of impacting our safety. So be very careful. I, I would suggest, yes, maybe it was the greatest vacation in the world that you ever had. You went to Disney World with the grandkids and they had the greatest time and you had the greatest time at the happiest place on earth. And you want to show the world how great a time it was. Here's my suggestion. Wait till you get back before you start posting all the pictures. Don't announce to people that you aren't around. Save them for later. Uh, it's not going to lessen your experience, and it's not going to lessen the experience of those who are looking at your site and saw that, wow, that, was, that must have been a great trip. Uh, they don't need to see it while you're there. They don't need to see it immediately. Just take the pictures, wait on it, and post it later. And, and uh, that will protect you. Make sure you know who you're dealing with. Um, uh, make sure you keep your personal information personal. That way you go toward a long, uh, toward a, uh, a long way toward protecting yourself. The internet is a great thing. Use of it to buy things, sell things, uh, get educated, communicate with others is great. But we have to be good consumers in its use. If you do, take into account the things that we talked about today. Uh, understand how the, the internet works and what the potential scams are. Um, you will um, have a valuable experience, but also go a long way toward protecting yourself. If you ever have a problem with a consumer-related issue, whether you bought something on the internet, 
or you're, uh, uh, you have a problem with the landlord, you moved out, you didn't get your security deposit back. Our office, the New York State Attorney General's office, has a mediation program available where you can actually uh, file your complaint online or you can download your complaint, uh, download our complaint form, fill it out, and send it into our office. And what we end up doing is sending that complaint on to the merchant with the hope that we can resolve your complaint. Um, additionally, filing complaints with our office lets us know what's going on out there. It lets us know that there might be a particular scam that's happening that we can notify others about this potential scam. The important thing is to tell somebody about it and we afford you that opportunity. So feel free to, to file complaints with our office. Uh, you can go on to the Attorney General's website which is uh, ag.ny uh, it, it's www.ag.ny.gov. Um, go on, or just just go to one of your search engines, Bing or Google or whatever, and just put in New York State Attorney General's Office, and you can get to our website. And uh, if you go through the website, you'll be able to find out how you file a complaint with our office. It's very uh, it's very easy. There's links right on the first page to to file a complaint, and you can. Um, or you can contact our office. The telephone number for our office is 1-800-771-7755. You can call us. If you call from that number, it will ring in the most local regional office of where you make the call from. So if you call from Ithaca, it will ring in my office in Binghamton. And you can uh, contact uh, call, talk with our consumer fraud representative. If no one's available to take your call, you can just leave a message and someone will get back to you. Um, I hope that uh, for those of you that are present, that you have a wonderful holiday season and safe. I hope that uh, all of you out in television land, that someday you will come and join us. We're here at Cornell Cooperative Extension at 615 Willow Avenue in Ithaca on the second Thursday of the month at 11 a.m. where we uh, televise our show. And it usually goes for about an hour or so. And then uh, I'm usually around afterwards to discuss any consumer related topic that someone may have, a complaint that they may have, give them guidance as to, to how they can pursue that. Uh, we're happy to have you. It's always great when we have people come and join us. So uh, I offer that opportunity to those of you who are out there in television land. We've been doing this a really long time. If there's a topic that someone out there would like to have addressed, is a part of our monthly programs, please let us know. We would be glad to address those things. Uh, otherwise, I hope that uh, you uh, all have a good, for those of you here, holiday season. For those of you out in television land, I hope you had a good tele uh, a holiday season and uh, having a good winter. And that we hope that one day we will see you out here. So uh, for those of you that are here, uh, have a good afternoon and, and hope to see you later. Thank you.